actually quite amazing to me how these moose are just completely content up high in this wind. And you know, we've got five moose just bedded down 300 yards. And this time of year, they just don't care. You know, obviously in the rut too, you know, you bring in all kinds of moose just right in. But it seems like after the rut is over, there's no interest in anything other than feeding and getting energy back. But it still surprises me that they're willing to sit up in this kind of weather. But I guess that's where the feed is, and that's the most important thing, is get, get that feed into you as much as you can before real winter sets in, although it's pretty much here. <laughs> So all the moose that we're seeing to this point are nothing we're interested in. And I know that I want to make it to the top of this mountain and get over into the other side and take a look at that valley. And hopefully there's something good over there. Ryan said that he did spot a couple bulls that uh, went over skyline down lower from where we are. Yeah, just the cows and uh, another bull, different bull that, that we didn't see it came through this drainage, but he's 54 or something. Man, I cannot eat my glass, Betty. We put in all the hard work to get here. Had a beautiful day yesterday and the day before, and then we finally got in here, and we can't buy a break. The uh, as you can tell, the wind is just screaming. It's cold and it hardly feels like October. It's so unforgiving in the mountains of the Yukon this time of year and we're getting it. Full force storm right now of wind. The moose are gonna be bedded down and we're, we're trying to keep the skimmers from flipping and even walking up the hills here is, is a difficult thing. I'm getting blown up and downhill so it's not the easiest, but uh, we're gonna hunker down and still try and see if we can't make this happen despite Mother Nature doing her best to kick us right in the stomach here with a day left of the hunting season. We pretty much worked this ridge. We have one more mountain to hit over here and then we're gonna have to drop down and start covering some more country because they should be in here and they're not. So maybe this weather, maybe the wind has really moved them down into the timber more would make sense. That's what I would do. And once they're down in there, then it's a whole different ball game because you don't call them out of there this time of year and it's spot and stock and if they're in the timber, it's just way more challenging. So that's what we're faced with the last two days of the season. And we uh, have to dig a little bit harder. Well, we're just watching a, like a, a good bull, but I think it's like mid to high 50s. Decent palms, lots of points. It's just not the bull that we're looking for. I'd rather shut the season down than shoot a moose like that at this time. That's okay. I'm totally prepared to walk away from the season without a moose, but I wasn't prepared to walk away without trying right to the bitter end. That is a way harder pill to swallow than not finding a big bull that I'm looking for. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll keep looking, but that's a really nice moose. Oh, oh he's running away. Oh. Well, my hunt's been a success. I got the moose I came here looking for. It looks like a nice old bull you can tell because he's got the nice thick bosses here he's maybe a bit over prime it's not huge on the fronts but this is good enough for me to take this home and make uh, moose shed antler soup so Greg can stay here and continue to look for a big bull I'm out of here I, I got I got my trophy thanks for watching certainly can't complain about today uh, as windy as it's been, as cold as it's been, we're seeing moose, you know, we must have seen probably 11 or 12 bulls at this point. Two or three best are kind of that mid 50s, just uh, nothing that we're looking for, but it's amazing to be able to see this many moose, you know, in the high country this time of year. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Although it would be great if the wind died down. That would make glassing so much easier. We uh, take what we can get in the last few days of the season. We just saw 
two bulls fighting, not big bulls, but pretty exciting to watch them fighting. They were fighting pretty hard for a bit. And there's three other moose bedded with them. One bull for sure, and two others, and they're down in a pretty steep drainage. So this could be the group we've been looking for all day long. They found a place with no wind, and they're hanging out there. So I can see three cows that are now, and then two bulls, and there's one bull that the, one of those bulls was fighting, I can't see him. Maybe I'll walk over to here, over to that ridge. Is it him? That's him. Awesome. 500 yards. He's just feeding, eh? So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna close the gap. It's amazing he was able to hide in that. Okay. way down to the bull. I saw him at 450 yards, and now we're like 250, and I see a moose bedded down under the tree, but I can't see his horns. So I can't be sure that it's him. We have less than an hour of daylight left. There's three small bulls up there. I was looking at the one, and it's just like, it doesn't make sense. I couldn't see his horns, but I could just catch a side of him. And it's just, it cannot be him. And it's not. He's up a little bit further, bedded down again in the willow, and I can see his paddle, but this willow is so high, I can't shoot for it. They're all coming right to him. He's right behind the three of them. They're all lined up. He's right behind them. He's uh, quartering toward me. Where is he? We did it, fellas. We did it. <laughs> He's over there. We just gotta go see him now. Oof. You got what we came for. Buddy, this is the one we're after. This is the one. That was hard fought. Most people never put in that kind of work for this. Five trips in and out, broken equipment, miles of hiking, nights in a tent, in the snow, crazy windstorms, two days left in the season. And here we are right where we're supposed to be. But the thing is we didn't quit. No, the only thing we did not break on this trip was our own spirits. That's <laughs> so true. I knew what I was getting into when I signed on for this one, the end of the season. It really is the only time that you and I are able to get together with our busy schedules and 
Admittedly, I probably would have just been sitting at home soaking in a hot tub, licking my wounds from the seasons. <laughs> I figured I may as well come out and try and get a few more stitches and a few more bumps and bruises before we put an end to the Yukon and 2021 number, and season. And number 10. And this is number 10, so it's a nice round number. So. Yeah, you can't leave it at nine. No, that would just, those are rookie numbers. Number 10 is like starting to get you into uh, you know, major. Like you kind of know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> to be able to wrap up the 2021 20, season with, with you and, and your team is, is so awesome. We're out here just, you know, not trying to add days to our lives, but add life to our days. And we sure know how to add life to our days. Every day out here is an adventure. And that's what the Yukon's about. That's what you do. And that's what you guys show so well is uh, the Yukon Wild. And we all love it. We all love watching it. And to be part of it is just epic. So thanks, Greg.